Welcome today to the Memorial Edition, Memorial Day Edition. Oh, she's pop. Oh, there she goes. Get out of the way. Of the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My name is Hobo Tom. And today, because it is leading up to Memorial Day, my girlfriend got me this nice Memorial Day t shirt. So instead of a wrestling shirt, I'm going to make my girlfriend happy. Wear the shirt that she got for me. She's very special to me. And I do love her a lot. Hopefully we're going to see her for our Monday Night Raw review. And I think we're going to have the, the two shows. Both Raw and SmackDown. Kind of separate. Only because girlfriend's going to be here for a change. Which, which is always good. Maybe show you a little bit of a Memorial Day feast. Mm, mini burgers. But today we're going to start off with the most recent show of NXT, one of the host shows that took place in Orlando. And just a couple of things I know. I don't know how, where, or the processes of how NXT books it shows, but they always find weird places because this was in like some like grade school gym. And, hey, it was my day off. So I figured, you know what, I'll go. And again, for 10 bucks, it's always, it's always very entertaining. So again, I know I'm not wearing my wrestling t-shirt. But it is Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, everyone. Thank you, all the vets that have served, and all those serving in the armed forces today. Again, please like and subscribe. Feel free to comment at, well, and send an email at, Bobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. Again, happy Memorial Day, everyone. I already heard the fireworks go off already. So hopefully you can get some sleep because, I don't know, this was, was, was a good show. It was an odd show. It had its high spots. It had its low spots. A, a lot of new people. It seemed a lot of local talent, too. So we're going to start off. And again, it, it was a really weird location, too. And like some grade school gym. At least here, when they come to Daytona Beach, they do it in, in kind of a pretty big center. The seating's a lot better. And, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being the homer role. But what we had, we had Kaya Sono, I think, against Leo Rush, and there was some big guy in Leo Rush's corner. Now, this was, this, was, this was okay. Kind of caught the tail end of the match. Kaya Sono, Chris Hero went over. And then, of course, Lars Sullivan comes out. Lars Sullivan is going to challenge eventually for the NXT Championship. And that, that should be really fun. The one thing with this video is it's going to be really video heavy. I didn't take a lot of pictures this time. Only because I got a bigger video card. So I figured, you know what? Instead of taking pictures and putting a bunch of slideshows in there, I'm going to bring you, the YouTube audience, NXT video highlights. So again, it was, it was a good match. It wasn't anything great. It was the one big guy's birthday or something. I don't know. Like, again, it was a weird location. It took me a little bit longer to get to. So I kind of missed the first one. That's what it was. Then we have Kyrie Sane versus someone. I guess she's like the local enhancement talent jobber heel. And, and this was pretty good. I mean, it's it's like
good match. I mean, you have the, the bigger, stronger, more powerful heel versus the quicker, more agile Kyrie Sane. So again, you have a nice little like contrast of styles. I don't know what it was with the, with the crowd, but they did not like her. The, the heel, and they just would chant, you suck, and she's like, I don't suck. But it's this. This was actually a cheeseburger quality match. And we now have production value in the hobo wrestling, in the ho in hobo Tom and his girlfriend's wrestling show. Again, this was kind of a fun match. It's not bad. I guess it's a, a good way to, to kind of put up a show. Good second match. The next match was a little bit more fun. To a degree, it was Ethan Carter the third. Dear, how did I used to do it? E C three. Versus again some 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 local guy. I have no idea who it was. Um, it, it was there was really lackluster showing on EC3's part. He just got beat up for most of the match. He did have his comeback, and if it wasn't for his comeback, I mean, I don't know what I would have. What the? What's this. <laughs> More production value? Wow. That, that must have been good. I, I know, know this is a hobo production. This was really a ham sandwich match. I mean, nothing really spectacular about it. It is what it was. It was some good action. I mean, the crowd pop for EC3. And that was really. About it.
the next match, and this was actually really good, because this featured Donovan Dijak, or, or, or I think they call him Chris Dijak now, and Powers, Feed Me Energy, versus 1-2, Oni Lorcan and Danny Burch, and again, this was really good. I mean... Good match overall. These two teams have 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 some chemistry together. I think they were also here in Daytona Beach. Again, with, with this, I mean, for, again, for some reason, and it might be the humidity in Florida, but the ropes seem slick because whenever who, who, whenever anyone tried to jump on the ropes, there, there was always some some footing issue. I don't know, and I, I don't know if that's the the, the, the the tightening, the turnbuckles, or if it's just the humidity. I, I, again, it was, it was a weird place because because it was a gym, but it was like a high school gym, so it wasn't well ventilated. There wasn't good airflow, and I don't know. The one here in Daytona Beach is a lot better, for whatever reason. And this was a very classic Oni Lorcan match. Good hard strike. Very English style. Him and Danny Burch just gel.
you know, overall, it was a really good good tag team match. It was it was fun. And it, it did something. And, oh wait, the heck! I do like my my production value. This was a cheeseburger match. I do like my props now. Horrible. But, again, it was fun. This led to the match before the break. I'll tease that later. But this was this was a flaming young match. This had the Velveteen Dream versus King Ricochet. And th this was awesome. That was a split crowd. They chanted Velveteen Dream, Velveteen Dream, and then that would slowly merge into Ricochet. Ricochet. And the opposite. You have Ricochet. 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 Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream. Velveteen Dream.
and wow, this was a good match. Again, both quality character work from both wrestlers. Ricochet imitating Velveteen Green. Velveteen Green doing his backslide out of the ring. Oh, those, those should be good. Again, it should be King Ricochet. <laughs> Again, that was from when he came to Orlando in WCPW. Again, also known as Prince Puma. And, and I'm, I'm kind of spoiled because I've seen him now three times, which is really rare. I mean, he could be on the main roster now. Again, this was great counter wrestling, great back and forth. I mean, countering counters, blocking counters. Amazing. And this was worth the price of admission. I mean, I have no idea what they're going to do to top. I mean, I think they're going to have a match at TakeOver. Couple weeks where I should be live streaming because I've served my punishment soon, I hope. But again, the, just the technical aspects of it, I've it's going to be the match of the year candidate based on take at TakeOver because right now this was a Damien match. No more prop. Eventually, though, I'll have some more, more production. <laughs> Even the hobo production. But again, this was awesome. I mean, this was a takeover quality event. This was a freaking SmackDown WrestleMania quality event. Flaming on just an amazing trial run of what they're going to do. And this led to a little break in the action. And they always got to give a little break. 
And I have to go into my notes because I kind of goofed up a little bit. But after the break, again, the seating was really weird. They had like the little kitty movable bleacher seats. And I don't know, that woman in front of me was very rude. She would stand up before every match. I think eventually somewhere in here I have a video of her somewhere. Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Cast shame. So after the break, we have a Forgotten Sons of Cutler and Moss and, and some other guy, Chad? I don't know. And local guy versus a guy named Mars? And the Street Prophets. Part of this just seemed this, this just seemed to be gang recruitment for some reason. Then you have the Forgotten Sons recruiting Chad. You have the Street Prophets trying to recruit Mars. Eh, it was okay. For Sucks Chance. It was a pretty loud crowd. It wasn't the best crowd, but it was pretty good.
some fan. Fans are funny. But some, like, there was a Cutler Sucks fan and went on pretty well and got his attention, which is really good. I do like it when the wrestlers actually give some feedback and, and interact with the crowd. It makes it more fun. But, but some crowd said, some fans said from the crowd that this is the best chant of the night. So, yeah. Again, downtown Orlando is not quite that great place. Unlike Bumtown. I mean, Daytona Beach. Beach. But again, this was, was a good. It was, it was a good act, good action. Again, it seemed like gang faction, gang warfare. Good interaction. I mean, again, a lot of good tag team work. Forgotten Sons. Again, it just seems like recruit, <laughs> recruiting for a new gang. It's like, hey, join our gang. Beat the heck out of that guy. That's your initiation. Again, a lot of botches. For some reason, just, just needs to get better, especially the ropes for some reason. I mean, if you do a hang leg drop, at least. Make sure the guy's head on the top rope and your leg doesn't hit the top rope and the guy sells. I mean, he does what he's supposed to do. So, I mean, it was, it was good. It is what it was. Overall, at the end, the Forgotten Sons actually went over. So, I mean, that was fun. It was, it was, it was okay. So, I don't know. Just a very simple cheeseburger match. It's very hard to screw up stuff like this. I mean, the one guy eventually did go over at the very end. It's like, yeah, you feel bad. He got beat up, and it was kind of a sneaky win. But, eh, it was okay. And this led to Marcel Martel versus
The perfect win! Ty Dillinger came back. Ty Dillinger got the loudest pop anywhere. He could have been in the outdoor arena and that place would have blown up. Got a huge pop in NXT, coming back to NXT from SmackDown. Again, for some reason, at WWE is moving people back to SmackDown. I you know the Revival doing NXT house shows. Now Ty's back in NXT, and that's probably where he belongs because he gets so much more pop and so much more credibility by being in SmackDown. But I'm sorry, being in, in SmackDown, it's just a natural fit. I mean, his gimmicks made for a small, more intimate venue. You put him in, in, in a large arena and, and it just kind of like drowns him out. Whereas you get him in a nice small arena, people like that.
I do like my pops now. Horrible. was going to be the main event because is this, for some reason their shows seem to get longer I know for a long time you, you used to have a pretty strict two and a half hour now they're getting more towards three hours so so we'll see I, I mean I mean ten bucks for three hours of wrestling I, I I won't complain but I'll get into that kind of when we get to the main event because again so some weird things happen so the next we had Bianca Belair and Aaliyah and now Ali is going to turn heel? Okay. Whatever it is. Versus Casey? I have no idea that is. I don't think the crowd knew who it was. Probably some local enhancement talent. Again, Orlando's full of wrestlers. It's right there near the performance center anyway. And Nikki Cross!
Well, this was really fun. It would, you have a heel turn for Aaliyah, who always seemed too cute to be a heel. She seems to be that natural face. Nikki Cross is now face. You have a crazy face person. I just hope they don't ruin her like they did because she's still like a freaking squirrel woman who eats too many coffee grounds. <laughs> Even Nikki Cross couldn't believe who her partner was because she cause she came into to the ring. She, she bounces, does the ultimate warrior stuff, and says, "You're my partner." And the one poor girl says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And Nikki Cross is like. Just dumbfounded. He got teamed up with an enhancement talent. But again, it was just kind of fun. I mean, you know, he ate the pin. And a couple of botches, though. It's just a really weird kind of thrown together with last minute kind of matches, I guess. And they couldn't practice or do whatever they're supposed to do. I mean, and the big thing is, is the, the botches came at like the three count, where you can see the ref is kids one, two, oh no, two, and it just seemed really perky jerky, I guess. But again, th this was really fun. <laughs> Nick, Nikki Cross is, is still the best. I put on a cheeseburger match with a freaking. Wet piece of meat. So therefore, this is a surf and turf rated match. And again, it was really fun. This will head to the main event of the evening. And it was a weird main event. Cause actually, by now, once people realized who was wrestling, like people left. And I think the main event, like ten after ten. It was, it was again. They're getting longer, and I guess some people actually had to go to bed. It was a Saturday night. Hey. Whatever, he, I had to work the whole thing. Again, my name's Hobo Tom. And I do a Hobo TV show, or Hobo show about wrestling. Again, this this featured Otis Dozovich versus Adam Cole, baby!
Okay, match. I mean, it was really good. There's great character. Otis Dozovich is, is an amazing character. I mean, he can do anything and just run with it. He's good about that. Again, it was it was fun. Again, you have a very strong powerhouse competitor versus a, a, a cunning, swift tactician in Adam Cole. Again, Adam Styles make fights, and this was good. I mean, <laughs> even Toza baby, Toza bitch started to mock Adam Cole. Which again, made Adam Cole mad and threw him off his game. It was fun. I enjoyed it. I, I mean, I. Maybe I'm partial towards heavy machinery because, because again, my nephews seem to like them, and and they just seem like really good guys. And of course, you have Adam Cole, baby. And any match, and this that's going to be a cheeseburger match on a match. So this was really a surf and surf match. And just seemed to be long. It's like they threw this match together. 
And it was for the North American Championship, and people wanted to say, well, what the heck's this guy doing? He's a tag team person. Otis <laughs> Dozovich was, was, was looking for a take. Take. Yeah. Again, his character work is amazing. And hey, it's Adam Cole, baby! So again, that's, that's, that was NXT in Orlando. It was, it was weird. It was just a weird, okay show. And, and again, you had good action parts, and hey, it is what it was. I mean, 10 bucks sometimes. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave, feel free to leave a comment. And if you do leave a comment, you will get your comment read on YouTube, and eventually it's going to be live. Also, please subscribe. I know I have seven subscribers. I like to thank them very much. Thank you. Thank you. Not worthy. Not worthy. Not worthy. Again, also feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Next week, we're going to have the two shows coming up for Raw and SmackDown. And hopefully, my girlfriend will be here. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.